Strings have a lot to do with your tone. The NYXLs for me have always totally been great. I really need that friction to feel my slides. I depend on that friction even for accuracy. Hey everybody, this week's rig rundown is with Sean Lopez of Crosses. If you're not familiar with Sean, uh, he got a, started in his career in the band Far who was arguably one of the most influential post-hardcore bands of the late 90s. Um, I, I didn't realize that myself until later in life how influential they were on the bands that I was listening to. Um, since the, his time in FAR, you know, he's worked a ton as a producer and an engineer, and we're talking big names like Chan and Rob Zombie and Tycho and Lupe Fiasco and the Deftones. He's, he, he's kind of done it all. And I feel like his experience as a producer has really informed his playing. Crosses is a two-piece band. It's just Sean and Chino Marino um, from the Deftones. And so Sean is doing a lot of heavy lifting. He's making all of the sounds outside of the vocal tracks um, for this band. So it's awesome to see how he's getting that done and what gear he is choosing um, coming from the perspective as a producer now and a guitar player. So I hope you enjoy. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Perry with Premier Guitar here in Nashville, Tennessee at Marathon Music Works tonight. We're a very special rig rundown with my friend Sean Lopez here uh, in Crosses. Yep. You might, uh, like me, know him from far. Um, beyond that, you're kind of like one of the busiest men in show business. Dude. I, you're mixing, you're producing, you're yeah. making Crosses records. you got a lot going on. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting to see, you know, how your musical sound has just evolved and changed and grown and yeah. this beautiful... You're now making what I would definitely consider the world's sexiest music. Awesome, man. <laughs> it's just yeah, great, man. It. It's, I'm such a fan. Um, with that said, some of the guitar sounds are a little unconventional, and you're also, you know, doing a lot of work with synth and yeah. also <clears throat> steel. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's get right into it. Um, I know on the newer record, you know, you're. I, I read an interview in Music Radar that you're not playing as much guitar. Mm -hmm. But it's, you've got quite a few guitars out, so... Yeah, I mean, I think when Crosses started, I, I was just learning how to play piano. I, I was, you know, naturally a guitar player. And so I think I wanted to make synthy sounding songs, but I didn't know how to play synths. So I was like, well, how can I get my guitar to sound like a synth? Sure. So I just, you know, pedals and everything and tons of stuff and, you know, lap steel and, and, and everything. And then... I think, you know, that was t 10 years ago. Right. And then I think naturally within that 10 years, I just learned to really how to play synth. And I think it just started influencing me more, or not influencing me, but more um, inspiring me sure. to play synth. And I was like, oh, now I can play like, you know, and I learned major seven chords and things like that. And it's and, kind of and, the limit with synth and, world. Yeah, and then, but, but then it's, it, I don't know, it always comes back to guitar. Like, I mean, definitely live it's more fun to play guitar because I can, you know, run Ooh. around a little bit more. When I'm playing synth, I'm stuck here. Right. Um, but yeah, like I think, I think I'm always, I'm always chasing sound. Um, you know, my sound is growing just because I, I feel like I'm, I'm always learning. Like I'm, I still want to learn more, you know, and, I, and I think that's, I don't know, one of those things where like, you know, if you stop, if you stop learning, then I think you stop progressing totally you know? yeah so yeah so uh, did you take you know traditional piano lessons or was it something where you had keys at home and just really started getting into it yeah I mean really just sitting down at the piano sometimes learning other songs like other people's songs and and you know YouTube of course is great for that YouTube is awesome. <laughs> um, but everything like and then you know once once in a while like I would start to learn stuff by ear on on piano which That's I used to do you know, guitar. when I was younger, as a kid on, on guitar, but piano is a lot, it's a lot harder, I think, to learn by ear, unless, unless that's what you play, you right, know, but right. that's still, I'm still learning on piano, you know, really, yeah. so it, it, you know, it is what it is, you yeah, know. I also feel like, you know, once a guitarist or any instrument, any instrumentalist really w starts to pay attention to piano and learn it, mm -hmm. theory becomes so much easier to understand. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I mean, this might make me sound kind of dumb, but uh, you know, I think it's important to say that that you know when I when I was playing guitar in Far, 
I didn't know what a minor chord or a major chord was because I played power chords. Just knew it sounded cool. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I grew up on like, you know, Helmet and Smashing Pumpkins and stuff like that where major minor chords really weren't that important. So like, uh, you know, I remember later on when I started doing like co-writing like song sessions and then, uh, you know, uh, people were like, oh, it's a, that's a minor and that's a sus. And I'd be like in the room going like, oh. I have no idea what these people are talking yeah. about. But that's, I, I don't, I mean, I don't care, yeah. you know, because like, I think sometimes knowing too much can, can, hinder. can you yeah. know, because sometimes somebody that knows too much would be like, well, you, you know, well, you can't, you can't do that yeah. because it's not right. And it's like, well, dude, it, you know, it sounds good. You know, I mean, even going, touching on Chino, like, the dude does never he never sings in the scale uh, like the key of the song he always borrows a note here and there which is i think that's why people say his melodies are weird you know and there's and they're they're you know out there in, in a good way in a you know in a, yeah i think you it's know? beautiful so, how he kind of drifts in and out yeah because you know? he again he doesn't he doesn't know what he's doing i mean he'd probably get mad at me for saying that but but he doesn't you know in a beautiful way he's very innocent to that and he just he just goes with what he hears you know yeah and it works yeah, I mean it's it's all that's the beauty of music. It's so so objective. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, what I like, most people would probably consider terrible, and vice versa. You know what I mean. I think yeah, that's yeah, yeah. It's, it's all one opinion. of the things that brings us to where we are standing right now, talking uh -huh. about it. I think that's so cool. Um, well, I guess let's start with this guitar, because you're on this quite a bit, right? Yeah, I mean this is like my my drop C guitar. Um, it has eleven to seventy strings on it um you know it's a it's a uh 20th anniversary 1974 les paul custom um i love this guitar yeah. i think it's the best looking guitar i've ever seen in my life you know <laughs> and um i love it's the black just, pick guard on the black yeah it's just stuff. i don't know i love this guitar it's a little heavy so it's not really good for my neck but um it really holds the low tunings really well i mean i think people are so used to you know gibson's not staying in tune very well especially the g string um, this guitar stays in tune really well, and um, you know, uh, I just I just love it, and it's uh, it's been one of those things where like I want to play it more, but you know, we only have so certain amount of songs in, right. in this tuning, so you know, it's 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 a good one. Yeah, so I think in talking to Mark your tech earlier, he mentioned that you have like six guitars out. Mm -hmm. Now, is that like a backup for three separate tunings, or, or do you have a lot well, of different tunings going on? Basically, we're in, I'm in standard drop D. Um, drop C and drop C sharp um, and so sometimes he's he's got his work cut out for him so he's got a couple guitars that are always sort of being the backup for the backup but the backup that he's the, the, the guitar that he's making the backup is actually a main guitar it's gonna play later you know because right. I just didn't want to bring like 12 guitars out I mean to me it's just like you know I have six guitars out and it's right. like that's that's enough you know for me it's so to my ear, I mean, it's sometimes hard for me to dis distinguish what sounds are actually synth and what is actually guitar on yeah. on, on your records. Um, I love that, though. You know, yeah, like, that's yeah. what's cool about it. I think yeah. that's the, the, the neatest thing. So when you're writing for crosses, is guitar kind of like, you know, the icing on the cake or like a little added? You, is that, are you ever writing a song on guitar and then informing the rest of the song or... Is it mostly like you're filling in where it on the new something? album i would say the guitar is more filling in stuff right um just again going back to you again like i just i'm just way more i was way more inspired by synth stuff but also just chopping up samples and and, and doing stuff like that where it's like and and there's some there's some moments where i'm actually what you might think is a guitar in the album is actually a guitar that that is sampled sometimes i would sample my own guitar put it on the keys and play it on the keys so so cool um because to me that's just more i don't know to me that's just more fun and um you know it's just it's just i don't know it, it inspires me more you man know? and it gives you a whole new language to speak in almost you know yeah, like, yeah. that's fun yeah because you can just play with it more right oh man um so I'm guessing on other tunings you're not going with such manly strings there yeah know? no i mean they're they're um I think the other guitars are like just, you know, basic tens, right, okay. you know. Are you using one, you know, specific brand for all the guitars? Uh, keep things easy? Yeah, Dunlop. Yeah. yeah, right on. Cool. Definitely. All right, man. Well, this is 
Awesome. Have you made any modifications to it or their pickups? Um, these are, uh, a friend of mine had recommended bare knuckle pickups. And when I went on the website and I checked them out, um, there was a brand called War Pig, War Pigs. Y yeah, the uh, bare and, knuckles, yeah. Yeah, and it just, I don't know, the name sounded cool, you know, Sabbath thing. And, and uh -huh. so I was just like, yeah, let's, let's get those. And I dropped them in and I haven't really turned back since yeah. then, you know. Man, they make some really, really fun stuff. Yeah. You do an FM9 and a couple of pedals, but is using an Axe FX as opposed to a real amp, is that informing your decision on what guitars to bring? Not, not too much. I mean, I, I, a lot of this, like going out and taking the FM9, I was having to recreate sounds that are on the album, right. which I don't even, at the time, like a lot of the stuff, I, when I lay down a guitar, I don't remember what I'm using. I don't write it down. I just lay it down because sometimes I, I will build a track and, and sometimes it'll be, you know, I will hope that Chino is inspired by it to, to sing something over the top, but sometimes he doesn't. So I don't really overthink anything too much. I just lay it down. I lay down the idea and then I, I move on. So once know? it's on the record, yeah, that's kind of set in stone. Yeah. And then you're yeah. probably having to go back and figure out what you were playing. Yeah. Oh, hundred like... percent, man. You know, <laughs> that's always a fun, fun yeah. time. Yeah. Well, hell yeah. All right. I guess let's take a look at another guitar. Yeah. All right. This, so this SG is so sick. P90s. Yeah. It's really cool. Um, it's actually not mine. It's, it's Chino's, but, oh, really? but it's, it's mine now. I don't think I'm going to give it back Can't to have him. It back, Chino. Sorry about that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I was, I was, I was looking for a guitar basically for, you know, the standard E stuff and drop D. And I remember he had just got this one and he, he left it at my house and I just picked it up and, and I, I tend to not like SGs that much because of this, the, the dive, but yeah. somehow this one with the wireless back on is not as, it's not as bad. And I always like, I always think like SGs are really cool looking and, and there's something about the P90s in this that just, it has a cool sound. So I tried it and I was like, man, this is really cool. I think that's gonna yeah. be one of my like standard. You are know. you having to compensate within the FM9 for the different output levels? Cause like the bare knuckles are pretty hot, you yeah. know? And yeah. some P90s are super hot, some aren't. So like, are there yeah. guitars where you're having to use like a boost or anything? Sometimes, but not really. I mean, because usually each patch that I that I that I, I made is it's is, is the guitar. Kind of, yeah. I'll be like, all right, this is the guitar I'm gonna use. Let's build that around that. Plus, so, your front of house knows what's going on. They can always, yeah, yeah, you know, of course, yeah, yeah, totally. And sometimes they will say, hey, that patch is a little hot and it's a little abrasive on the on the on the upper mids. Can we dot? So I'll just dive dive into uh, in, into fractal and you know either do the multi-band eq or something like oh, that right, just right, sort yeah. of like scoop certain frequencies yeah, out on the yeah. fm9 also man that the color screen that's big yeah it's like a lot more user friendly than the first couple of versions of the yeah the Fractal yeah Earth. definitely yeah those things are great man well that's a beautiful sg and you've got a couple other guitars out with you as well yes so we've covered your gibson world and now we're kind of into the gretsch land here tell yep. me about this one um this is a 1964 um gretsch corvette I think I think back in the day it was probably their attempt at, to make some kind of SG, SG kind of look. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I got this at Guitar Center in 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 LA. Um, it was just funny as I was I was actually going in there to pick up a Fender seventy eight bass that I had bought. But you know, how Guitar Center has those police holds that they have to do for an, for a month. I, I was there to pick it up, and I was like in line, and I and I turned around and I saw this thing just sitting there, and it was. You know, it said 1964 Gretchen. It was like, it was really, it wasn't that much money. I, I think it's just like not a very in-demand guitar. And yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and so I was like, my, my, my guy Ryan there, I was like, hey, what, what's up with this? He's like, oh, dude, that's been sitting here for like three months. I, I get you a sweet deal on that one. So I took, I took that, the bass and this and I know the Les Paul is like my, probably my favorite guitar. If, if, if everything, anything were to happen to it, I'd be crushed. But this is probably my favorite guitar to play in the studio on state. I mean, it's light, it's very small. I actually broke the headstock off once. It was, I was upset about that, but, uh, that's a whole nother story. But, um, it's just, I don't know. There's something about these pickups that I really love. They're, and that's they're probably a, an original. Right? Yeah. They're, they're, they're. It's kind of in, in between a humbucker and like a single coil like Telecaster. So it's got that bite, but it's got that, you know, that, that bottom end too that, that you get huh. from a humbucker. And um, I love this guitar. It's, it's, it's a standard guitar, but within Fractal, I use pitch blocks almost on every preset, like pretty much. And so a lot of times this guitar is 
this this goes back and forth between E and drop D, and but on some songs, there's I'm hitting pitch blocks where I'm going minus seventeen. Wow. Um, but keeping the tension, that's great. I mean, it's not yeah, like throwing your guitar like, all over the it, place. I mean, the thing is with the pitch blocks in, in Fractal, it, it's, there's no, I mean, there's, you know, there's a little bit of latency, but it's, I, I can't really hear it, you know? And um, so it makes it really easy. Otherwise, I'd have, you know, 13 guitars yeah. on stage, you know? So I really like this thing, man. S did this one get chewed up from you or is this somebody? Yeah, this is, a, no, this is actually from this tour. Oh, wow. Because at, at home, sure. I'm just, you know, Right, but but live, I'm live like, you know, yeah, you know yeah, I'm yeah. like putting on a show. I guess yeah. I don't know. And man, obviously this is no longer operational. You probably just blocked that off. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But um, what a weird design. It's so cool. I love this guitar, yeah. man. It's it's just amazing. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? what you mentioned that you, it's your favorite one to play. Is it just because of the playability? Like, yeah. Is it just the, it's the just, neck feels I mean, right? yeah. It's just it's just it's just it almost feels like a three quarter scale guitar, but it's oh, yeah. not, you know, it's just it's something about scale. it. But it, this pickup is, is, is great. Didn't um, these, the Corvettes like originally have kind of a honking ass pick guard? Like it was yeah, like, well, this pick guard used to go all the way up into here, but it was rotting out. Oh, the big light or whatever it was. Yeah. Was and, and, um, my, uh, this guy that I, that does my, my work in LA, um, I took it into him to when I broke the headstock and he's like, Hey, do you mind if I cut the pickguard off here? He said, because that stuff's rotting and it's eventually going to get into your pickup. Totally. I mean, you can kind of see it's got some little green it's little. Definitely some patina on yeah, that yeah. bad boy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I love yeah. this guitar. It's, 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 I mean, in the studio, it sounds amazing. Yeah. You know, it's just, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's 1964. I mean, they don't. They don't make them like that. They don't make them like that, man. That wood is so old. Yeah. So, as a bit of a departure, you also have like a, what looks to be like a newer Gretsch yeah. big body here. <laughs> yeah, I got that recently. Um, um, they, 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 they hooked me up with that and, uh, it's beautiful. I, you know, I, I've always been sort of intrigued by, by, by hollow bodies, you know, just the Gretsch hollow bodies. Like I'm almost like, you know, cause Martin Gore, Depeche Mode. Sure. And, yeah. but I, I first got a hollow body, uh, like a style like that is it was a Schecter and they, they, they hooked me up with that. And I, I use that in the studio and that guitar is on the album more than probably any other guitar really? and, but then when i got this for live um the, these pickups are a little bit hotter than the than the, my Schecter ones and so i think for for the stage this one was my was like, better yeah yeah i still have the other one for here as a backup but it's that thing's do you amazing have issues too. with it feeding back being a hollow body no and, really i mean because man this I guess thing it's all direct and stuff yeah, yeah this yeah. thing is like so crazy like you can dial in the the, the gates and everything it's it just it, i don't know i just i I don't know. I love the fractal stuff. I yeah. mean, it's, it's just, it's to me, it's, it's just so much better than anything else. I mean, I know, I know people have arguments about sure. neural and, you know, the uh, helix and all that, but I mean, for me anyway, that, that just, because I use so many, like so much effects in the pitch block, especially, like I said, it's like almost every preset has it in there. Even if it's just my, you know, minus 12 at 10% because it just adds that little, L little bit of bit, like, yeah. you know, um, so I That's love it. I, yeah. I really love it. So before we move on to your last two guitars um, yep. in the Schecter family, look, can we show the audience the, what you're, how you're using the pitch box? And yeah, so so for instance, like um, the the song "Invisible Hand," which has those very big hits in it. Um, uh, you know, I could I I was like when we first started this, I was like, oh well, you know, because I have a Fender Six and and and, so, uh, and I was like, oh maybe I'll bring that, but that thing is so it's so big. It, yeah. it, it, it's just not comfortable to play. So I was like, like a, like a basics, like a yeah, 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 it's yeah, like okay, a basics. Gotcha, yeah. yeah. So I was like, man, let me just, let me just see how these pitch blocks are. And so I just kind of created this. Or like, take me to, um, uh, ghost ride, which is, man, in, I gotta say the juxtaposition of that guitar and that tone yeah. are pretty freaking funny <laughs> like it's awesome i love that so so like ghost rides no this this is the one i was talking about where it goes down at minus 17 so it's a Shit. you know so ah. it's it's just you know i mean that's just that's just a ridiculous low you know It 
And then it's funny because then when you play it, it's just like, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. low at all, you know? Man, so, it sounds phenomenal, though. Yeah. That's such a cool pattern. Yeah, it's, wow. it's, it's great. I love that you have it just set up as like main and then lower. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. main, great. lower. Um, cool. Let's take a couple, uh, look at the, your last couple of guitars, and then I really want to dive into um, not only the, the fractal, but uh, how you're using synths and stuff yeah, like yeah, that as well. Yeah, of course. And so we now have uh, the Schecter PT, which is very cool yeah. guitar. Um, yeah, uh, when I hit them up, I, I was saying, do you have, because the hollow body one they make, it's called the Coupe. They don't make it anymore. I was lucky to get two of them. But I was like, man, I need another guitar. But I love those pickups, man. I, I just love like these pickups. And he's like, well, we do have this PT and it has them. It's kind of like a Telecaster style. I was like, well, I'll try, I'll try it out. And then this ended up being my like drop C sharp guitar. Um, and yeah, same pickups. Yeah. I mean, or they're, they're not exactly the same. I think they're just similar. Same style. Yeah. But um, yeah, and I like it, especially with the, uh, it's got the, the, the maple fretboard, which is like a little bit brighter. Right, right. Um, but yeah, it's I cool. I love the big yeah. ass fat binding. Yeah. Yeah, it's just yeah. so cool. Yeah. That's a slick looking guitar for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, and they, then, and they, you know, they're always good to me there. So, yeah. Everybody over there is just so sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love those guys. And then also the neck to me almost looks like it's got a, like a, a mat kind of thing. It seems yeah. Like yeah, a little bit. It's like, it's, it's easy, you know? Yeah. Especially because this is, this comes out like usually later in the set. And by then I'm already like sweating pretty, yeah. pretty much, you know? So, yeah. Hell yeah, man. That thing is beautiful. Yeah. I always love the, the, the deluxe style. Yeah, Look, looking guitars because it's like a kind of the best of both worlds. You're yeah, getting the, yeah. the LP kind of setup, you know. Yep. Right on. Okay, let's take a look at the last one, and then we'll probably have you throw your uh, Les Paul back on to go through some oh, of yeah. these sounds. So yeah, this 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 is actually uh, this is this is the one. Yeah, this is not the one. The one that I have is at home. We call that one the uh, Phil. It's just Phil Schechter, you know. And uh, this this one is 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 kind of serving as a backup. It it, it never comes out, but the one I have at home was the one I used all over the album. Like, it's, it's crazy, like, how much that, that, that guitar's on the album, even on the, uh, the earlier stuff, the EPs and stuff. So um, this, is where, this is where I fell in love with these hollow bodies yeah. and, the, and these kind of pickups, you know. Um, it's such an interesting take. Like, I love the F-holes. Yeah. It's so fancy looking, especially for, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I kept trying to get, want to get a black one from them because they made it in black, too. But, but by then, it, they, were just, they stopped making them. And I, every now and then, I'd hit them up and be like, hey, you got any you get any of those black ones in, you know? Because, like, I always, I always prefer a black yeah. guitar, you know? Are you uh, using the Bigsby much at all? Oh, yeah. Oh, tons. Really? Yeah, yeah, tons during the show, for, uh, for sure. Hell yeah, I love the big ass volute on them too. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm sure that has to help with stability. Oh it's yeah, just got, it yeah. Has I mean, to. they stay in tune really well. Yeah. I mean, they're 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 great. You know, you can't hit them too hard because of the bridge. It right. you know, pops out, but it, but it's good. Yeah, that thing's a beaut. All right, well, um, let's throw back that let's let's yeah. fall back on, and then we'll kind of go through because I know you like to incorporate, you know, not only synth sounds but also pedals and stuff yeah, as yeah. well. Hey y'all, I'm John Bollinger with Premier Guitar. So our rig rundowns for a long time now have been sponsored by Diderio. And I'm thrilled to be using the D'Addario Expand pedal board. I've got this little guy that fits in my gig bag. And like many of you, I'm changing pedals all the time. I love having a board that can shrink as I'm shrinking my board or expand as I'm expanding it. And that's why I love the Expand pedal board. Their patented telescoping technology lets me instantly change the size of my pedals playground. It also features a unique cable management system and comes fitted with loops of Velcro, keeping everything neat and easy to swap. The two expand versions comes with either one or two rows, depending on your needs. So a big thanks to D'Addario. Now, let's get back to more rig rundowns. I know you were like, you know, especially when Cross had started before you were really, really deep into the piano, mm -hmm. you're into these synth sounds. Do you ever fuck around with one of those like Roland synth pickups? They yeah, I, like I, shit, actually, like, I actually had a GR uh, 700, the old yeah, ones the, with the, the Star Trek looking guitars. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And those were a little, the latency was crazy it's on so those. Yeah, I yeah. mean, they looked really cool. It's almost not usable. But, um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I will buy any synth pedal or anything and just try it. But a lot of, a lot of them, they just really haven't made something that I really like that's, that's usable yet for me, anyway. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd love. I love trying to get the guitar to not sound like, like a guitar, guitar. you know, yeah, like that's, that. that's, that's, that's. So within the FM9, are you building the set list by like song by song? Yeah. Okay. So that's mm -hmm. how you're definitely going about it. Yeah. 
Well, beyond that, I see a couple, you know, I know that you're using the, the Chase Bliss Mood, which is such a sick pedal. Like, yeah. Man, those guys make, everything they make is incredible. Yeah, every, I, I instant buy. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me how you came to the pedals that are on your board. Because I know in the studio, you're probably experimenting with Yeah, everything. I mean, I have a ton of pedals at home. Um, you know, the, 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 this, you know, Electro Harmonics, um, you know, synthesizer pedal is, is, it's been, it was, I bought it off, on, on this, like, weird guy on Craigslist, you know. Yeah. Like a and, uh, McDonald's parking lot situation. Yeah, it was weird. I went to his house, and it was, he was just kind of weird. But he had this guitar. He had this pedal, and he had told me it's been modified, man. And I don't, you know, I don't really know what was up with it, but it's been modded. And I mean, I even opened it up once, and it looked like somebody did some stuff in there. A home job on it. Yeah. yeah. And because I've tried, I, I mean, just for the sake of real estate, I've tried. Because there's I bought a, I bought yeah. a smaller version of it, and it. Just doesn't do the didn't, thing. Didn't do what this does. So I actually met this guy the other day that um, that, that makes, you know, pedals and, and he'll mod you know modify, but he'll make clones of certain things, sure. even weird stuff. And he's like, man, if you could, once you're done with this tour, if you could send me that pedal, I will I'll figure make, out what it is. Because I yeah. want something that's just in a little tiny box. Right. Because I literally, that's, that's a, a that for me. That's that's a set it and forget it. I don't touch those settings on it, so it, it's it's just ready to go. Um, but it is a weird pedal and it it reacts different. Right. It's almost like to get it to react the way I want it to react, I have to hit the strings hard, but also mute them at the same time. It's the I, I don't know how I learned to do it, but it's it's hit, literally. Is like, there a, a way to hear? Just yeah, that it's pedal? like it's like. So 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 if you just hit it, it's just. You know, it's like. Like I'm almost muting at the same time. It's almost like you have to mute it to restart the frequency. Yeah, I think that's I yeah. think that's what it is. And and you know, I wish I I mean I wish Fractal made a a, a a clone of that in in the in in you know a block of that but they don't you know right. i i used to 10 years ago when we went out a last on tour i was using actually i was using guitar rig native oh, instruments yeah. okay and yeah. they have that in there they have that Weird. they have that pedal in there and it it's and actually it's pretty, pretty good so i i could you know but now i mean guitar rigs you know it's it's uh, that was a while ago yeah well, maybe uh, the guy when you send him send it to him, you can not only make it a little bit smaller, but like add some MIDI capability and shit, so you can yeah, really, I mean, really that, would, that would be great. Yeah, because I, mean, I because they are fun, but man, that's a big ass pedal. I know it's huge, huge man. Yeah, and yeah. you could probably fit three where that. One oh, I know, is. I know. Yeah. yeah, and then is this just some sort of buffer that, or an AB switch? That's an AB sort? switch. Okay, yeah. Gotcha. Cool, and then. FM nine over here, FM nine back here as well. Yeah, is this a backup or is it? Just it's, so you can well, use it, it it's while... A, it's a backup, but it's also... That's that's where uh, my lap seal is running into that. Oh, so that's Because my, my lap seal is not coming out of the cans because that thing is very loud and very aggressive. And I think when we were in rehearsals, Chino was just... He just couldn't hear himself because... They're they, pretty they, ice picky. They're, they're, they're hard to control. Yeah. Um, so we ended up being like, well, we could use the backup and then run that direct so it's just going to into a cab simulator to, to house and then so they can control it. So he's not getting killed know? on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Now, with, uh, how do, uh, just curious with, 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 with this lap steel, are you running like a, like a standard, like an E9 or whatever, C9 I think is what? No, it's actually, um, you know, when I, well, I, I, I got that thing probably, man, I don't know, it was, it was you know, 2010 maybe, uh, but I was really inspired by what made me want to get one was like Daniel Lanois, like Shit, you see yeah, it, yeah. like, and so I got one, and then I realized pretty pretty quickly that uh, I'm not Daniel Lanois on that thing. Uh, I bought one which is, around which is, the same which, time, which is fine, you know, which is they're... fine. So I said, you know, I'm gonna figure out what I can do to make something cool, and so like, it's all just tuned to one string, at one note, the whole thing, low and high, and um. So and I feel like, and I feel like by doing that, I kind of created, I mean, I hate to say it, but I kind of, I feel sound. like I created my own thing, yeah. you know, cause I've never seen anyone else do that, you know, like sure. maybe they have, I don't yeah. know, but, um, 
you know, yeah, maybe I need to explain. Somebody in the somebody in tunings. somebody in the somebody in the comments is going to call me out, but you know, oh, oh about so this guy. so man, he did that way long yeah. ago, you know. But anyway. well, that's that's a fun little taste, just because obviously with a bar, you're getting bends and shit you would never get yeah, with fun. a guitar. I, I love playing that thing. Also, see an Ebo over here, which I'm a huge fan of. Yeah. I think they just sound so fucking cool, and obviously, it I feel like it really fits crosses. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. I'm sure you're Definitely. using that quite yeah. a bit. So this, this on one song, we we actually t tune this down to A. The top string and that's you know another reason why the low string so and it's really i just played two notes on the whole song on the guitar it's mo mostly on the synth but it's just you know it's a big aggressive <laughs> And there's a you know there's a pitch block in there too that's, sure. that's going down yeah. a, a, an octave down. It's kind of blowing me away. But it's only, only only like you know probably twenty percent or something. It's wild how accurately it does like an eight string you know like yeah. a very very like yeah. That's wild. Are you ever in a situation where you're on the FM or on the guitar and also playing synth like? Never like at the same time. I'm no. Not, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not that good. Well, <laughs> I guess let's hit a couple of your FM9 core sounds. So this is like another, I mean, another one's just, it, it's just a lot of, a lot of these sounds will just be very like shoegazy, dreamy, sure. like tons of high octaves, delays, you know. There's this. That's another one where I'm using the, you know, I'm using the Bigsby a lot yeah. on that one. Just to modulate, um, yeah, man. It's such a, like a church organ-y. Yeah, <laughs> kind of yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, yeah. like I said, I, I, I use, I, I definitely flex this uh, CPU in here, you know. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah, and then uh, take me to, uh, like, um, yeah, take me to protection real quick, actually. <laughs> So this is another one where it's pitched down. I don't know how much it's pitched down. I mean, maybe it's just an octave. It's just oh, back. Wow. You know, so it's like another, um, I don't know, it's another so on the record, are you actually playing bass? Because it sounds, it's to me, it sounds like you could probably approximate it or get away with just using pitch blocks and a guitar. Yeah, there's 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 bass, but for this, like, I thought about bringing a bass out, but I was just like, I don't know, it's just too much, you know. Yeah, totally. Um, but yeah, uh, take me to uh, uh, pleasure. So here's one where like, um, I I actually go to the expression pedal. Oh, cool. You know, it's just like. Um, So it's just so fun. It's yeah. almost like the wah pedal from hell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because it's got like a, there's like a synth engine on there. And, right. And um, yeah. So fun. Pitch down. Man, I mean, you're, you're getting so many sounds out of, uh, out of a pretty yeah, yeah. compact, concise yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I, I situation. Love, I love this thing. Yeah. So we got an old Fender here, and I'd love to know how you're incorporating this. I know that all the strings are tuned to the same uh, note, but. You've got so much processing power. You, there's so much shit you can yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Can we hear it? Yeah, yeah, of course. That's. That's pretty interesting, man. Yeah. Like it almost has like a natural chorusing kind of thing, almost mm -hmm. like a twelve string, but yeah, yeah. It's so you know, the, um, the strings kind of go as well. yeah. a little bit out of tune with each other, so you know, makes it yeah. makes it cool. And then, as far as um, synthesizers, you, you, you're kind of going between the Prophet Six, and then what is this guy over here? That's the Novation, um, but that Novation's just just running all the. Uh, I have a I have a computer off stage that's uh, all soft synth stuff. Gotcha. So like, you know, samples are in there, like everything. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's just running all, all, all off stage stuff, which, right. is, which is cool. So are you like 
just clicking through sounds and like that's cool that's cool or like i don't like that is that how that happens or is it just because it's yeah. mostly you just got to sit and listen and yeah i mean i usually like with with soft sense i usually i like to start with a preset but i don't like ever you know i like to tweak it you sure know, of course something, you don't want to use something that's close you know yeah. now do you play drums as well no nah, because your really. programming is excellent it, it, almost like yeah. a lot of times I mean, when guys don't play drums and they program they're yeah. doing shit that wouldn't be possible. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think, I think it's just more like the producer side of me sure. of, of work, you know, having a history of working with bands and being like, yo, drummer, don't, let's skip that kick right there. Like, right. Don't, don't hit that kick on the end going into the Mixed. top of the chorus, so you know, just, just yeah. stuff like that, you know. Are you typically starting with drums, like when you're writing a song? Like finding a good um, loop to hard, build around? Hardly ever, really. really. Yeah, hardly ever. Just usually starts with some sort of Melody. sample okay. that's chopped up or like a chord progression, but um, yeah. yeah. Well, damn, dude. All right, and I guess lastly, what is this? What, what is this guy here? That's like a photo theremin. It's oh. like. Uh, Are you using that as well? I I haven't. I used to use it, but I haven't really used it in this situation yet. But it's it's kind of this weird thing. Where... It's actually super fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just yeah. noisemaker, man. Yeah. You've got all the you've got some really, really fun toys up here. Yeah. I Sean, try, try to have fun, man. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Uh, obviously, awesome. I'm a huge fan, but yeah. I know we got VIP coming up. Um, thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, taking the time to stick through all of this. Stay tuned for more rig rundowns, lessons, uh, gear reviews, all that fun stuff. Till next time. Awesome, man. Thank yeah, so that, much, that was man. that was a lot of fun. I've had, if we counted them, probably seven bad Diderio strings in 30 years. The reason we only stock Diodario strings is because Diodario strings are perfect. It's nice to be able to depend on something. <laughs>